Good afternoon, Adam here. I wanted to do a quick video on three different useful uh, automations for buttons. So you might ask, why use buttons? I, you know, it can only do a single thing. So you click a button and it does something. I'll tell you it's useful because unlike you, most of the people on your team or in your organization are not going to have the same level of expertise or knowledge with how to use this program. So just for an example, using my uh, follow-up from vendors template. So the way I have this one set up, as I showed in a previous video, was you click on status and then click down sort of the list to move it down the page. So yeah, I mean, that works fine, but there's a little bit of training involved, to, especially if you're adding a bunch more stuff or you need to click multiple times. So rather than do it that way, a button is click one time, the button says, I'm going to do this, click one time, and it does the task. And it's less learning, it's directly in front of you, You'll, you can see the name, and yeah, I mean, that, that's essentially the purpose. It's, the purpose is simplicity, and the purpose is to keep as things as simple as possible for your team when simplicity is worth the real estate on your screen. So let me show you the first one. So to start, you have to make a button. So you just go in your column centers and you make a button. Okay, I know how to do that. So the first one we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do the escalation that I've done in, a, in previous videos where essentially it moves it down to the escalate column and then notifies a particular person and emails them to tell them that a task is stuck. So we're just gonna call this escalate and we're gonna rename the button, well, so invoice Bob. I want to rename the click me button to uh, wants me to set it up. All right, so we'll set it up first. So when the escalate button is clicked, now that I named it escalate, we're going to move it to the escalate column so it's down lower again. And then I'm going to notify. And this is where you say what the notification is going to be. So here it's going to be this invoice is stuck. Please advise. And then it's going to notify. You can choose who you want it to notify in your team. So here it's going to notify me because I'm the person that wants to know that something is stuck. So we're going to create that automation. And now let's see if it'll let me customize the description. There we go. Escalate, and let's match the color or close to. So now you just click the escalate button, get a nice little arrow. There it goes, pops down there. And I'm going to get an email that says, Bob is stuck. Please let me know what to do. So that's test case number one. All right, test case number two is a little more complicated. This time, let's say we want to actually use this screen to send follow-up emails to the people who's I you know need the invoice. So let's just say rather than needing to escalate it down to Bob, we're invoicing Sally. And then we're gonna attach it as a file, which I've shown how to do in a previous video, but so I'm, I'm not gonna get into that. I right, but we're gonna send Sally the invoice. So here we need to do two different things this time. First, we need to do a text. We're gonna name this email. So I'm, I'm gonna send it to myself just so I can show you how it works. But we're, I'm gonna send it to my work email. Let's just pretend this is Sally's email. So we're gonna put Sally's email in there and you could actually pull this from another board if you wanted to, but that's a little beyond the scope of this video. And then we're going to add a button to send this email. So button. And it wants us to set it up. So this time, when the button's clicked, I want to name it first. I think that's annoying. Send client email. So we're going to make a button automation. So when the send the client email is sent, we're going to send an email. Please pay invoice 
your invoice is due, please see attached. And then this time, we are actually going to pull it off the email column. So that's looking at that column where I put in my email address. So we're, we're going to create this automation. Whoops, got to link your email account. And now I'm going to name this to email. And then I'm going to click the email button. And let me pause for a second. I'll pull up open my emails and show, you, show it to you. All right, so now you see the email. So it is from the uh, Gmail account, which I used to send it. It is to Adam Mountain Verdict, which was the uh, text that I had in the email box right here. And it said, your invoice is due. Please see attached, which it wasn't attached, but that's not the point right now. You can even add on to this uh, automation if you'd like to. So let's just say, after you send the initial request, you can make it even more complicated. So editing just doesn't, it doesn't work. You basically just have to start over every time, which I find a little annoying. But let's just say you wanted to move this down to the next column. So we'll just duplicate. And then move item down to follow up. I delete the other one. So then this time if you click on it, it's gonna send it. It's gonna move it down to follow up. And then you can set up another automation if it's in follow up to move it down to second follow up. And then finally, when you click the email button on second follow up, you can move it to escalate. So this really simplifies the movement between the different categories for your, your team. So you just click a single button and it goes through this whole list. You don't have to change statuses. You can, I mean, in this kind of list, you could actually just, you could almost just remove the status. You could just add another button that says done, click the button, goes to complete, gets archived. I, so it does everything in the background and all I have to do is click the button. Again, you can accomplish the same thing with the status bar if you wanted to, but this is just much easier and you can just basically feed everything into this one function. I got one more to show you today. Give me one second. I'm going to reset my board. All right, third example. This is what I would call the snooze button. This might actually be my favorite of the three. Maybe I should have started with this one. <laughs> so let's just say, rather than a, a vendor request, let's just say it's something you need to do, to do. And then let's just say you need to make the invoice. So you're going to see that I already have automation set up in this board to make the due date today. All right, that's just to give an initial date. I would always recommend giving an initial date, otherwise they get sometimes they can get a little lost. But let's just say you know you're not going to get it done today. I, it's, it's your to-do list. You have some stuff that you had set due to today. You're just not going to get to it, but it's not a big deal. I, you could click on date. And then click, you know, next Wednesday, whatever. I, you know, two weeks. Or, this, this is more fun if you ask me. You can do it as a button. So go into buttons. And when the button is clicked, then you're going to set the date to today. Oops. Date. To today and then you're going to push the date a week so let's just seven days so we'll call this the snooze button snooze nice blue color so when you click the snooze button you're going to see it gets pushed to the 19th, which is exactly a week from today. So this is especially useful if your staff is feeling a little 
overwhelmed, they have too many things on the deadline, they don't want to have to click on this, they can just click the snooze button, and, you know, you sort of hope they don't do it too often, because the idea is to get things done. <laughs> but sometimes you just got too much to do. So you just click the snooze, goes out a week. It's kind of cute. I, you know, maybe not the most practical. It's not too hard to click on the date and click a week down, but I like this one. All right, those are three basic, basic examples to get you started on using uh, button automations and just sort of my thoughts behind why you may want to consider incorporating them, especially if you have some sort of convoluted process that really all just needs to go on in the background, but is done the same way every single time on that board. I mean, you can make them very specific to each column and each group if you want to, but it's going to be more useful on a process board rather than like a project board. So if you're, if it follows the process the whole way down, it's going to be much more useful in that sort of context because it's a, you know, it's a single sort of set in stone sort of process. A process being something that you have steps A to Z and you may not use every single step every time, but there are no unique steps. It's just going to be the same steps every time, although sometimes you skip some. So that's when a button can be useful if there's a lot of unique steps uh, or unique tasks that need to be done or, or you know, something very specific to a single client, then not quite as useful. All right, I hope you found this useful. If you have any questions about this or anything else you'd like me to cover, let me know in the comments and I'll get around to it. Thanks.